Join me right now on Kumite TV is UFC Bantamweight Sarah Morris. What's going on, Sarah? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. Um, The first thing I want to get into is I know right next to you is your cat. Is that the cat Kimchi? Yes, it is. She okay, now, <laughs> is that cat named after the Korean delicacy? Of course. <laughs> what, what's the story behind that? You got to tell me that. Um. Well... We just got her from the shelter a few months ago um, because her other cat passed away, unfortunately. So we wanted to get a new friend for her other cat. And she's just like a ginger cat. And me and my boyfriend, we both like food a lot. And Kimchi's awesome and the same color as her. So, <laughs> yeah, we went with that name. Yeah, that's unique. You know, that's the first time I've ever heard a pet named Kimchi. So oh, it's yeah. kind of cool. <laughs> nice. Now, um, you know, you've been in Vegas for around a year now. Has it been over a year? Yeah, just over a year now. What makes that place the perfect place for you? Um, to start with, I guess I moved here because the UFC PI was here. So I had help with like nutrition, strength and conditioning, physio. And and then there were multiple MMA gyms in town. So I found my place at Extreme Couture with my coach, Dennis Davis, who's just absolutely amazing. And there's just so many killers at the gym that I get to train with and that um, put me in my place, but also helped me improve. So I've just been loving it out here. Before you made the move, I saw a short documentary type piece on you and uh you know, you training in Canada and kind of like the struggles that you were going through before you moved to Las Vegas and the PI, you just mentioned like the nutrition and stuff. You you mentioned that in the documentary about like how it's very tough for you to kind of get all the supplements and get like all the food right and everything. And that's very pivotal for you. How, how has that changed you? You know, like how has that changed like physically you? Um, I feel like I'm in way better shape. I feel like before I didn't fully understand all of the nutrition I figured less is better if you're trying to lose weight, um, which doesn't always help when you're trying to train a lot. So I've really got my nutrition dialed in. And then I got people that can help me any day I want, every day I want um, to help me just stay on track. So it's just one less thing I have to worry about when I fight because they check my weight every week and they order my meals for me. So if I... <laughs> If my weight's high, then that's up to them to fix that, and that's not really my issue. Man, it must be so nice to not even have to think about that stuff. You just get your food, and you just have to eat it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's pretty perfect. I, yeah. I love it. my other cats here now. When okay. I talk, I think <laughs> I'm having an argument or something, so she comes yeah. to calm me down. <laughs> there you go. Fumble. <laughs> You got about a, you know, a less than a month, you know, from the fight, you know, how have you, you know, structured your training camp? Have you had a, you know, a normal lengthy training camp for this fight? Um, kind of, I've, I've known about this fight for a while and I've trained pretty good for it. Um, I got sick for a bit, but I'm fine. It was just like a flu that lasted way longer than it should have. But I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling like in shape and strong and I feel like I'm going to peak right at the right time. So I feel, I just, yeah, I feel really good for this fight. How have you structured this camp? Is it, you know, do you spend most of your time at Extreme Couture or is it mostly at the PI? Um, I'd say I'm probably about half and half this time, but um, I'm really working a lot with uh, my boyfriend slash coach slash training partner slash everything. Um, so he's been holding pads a lot for me and we've been going over a lot of game plan stuff and just like, working on my movement and just really trying to figure my game out um, and just improve everything. So I've been doing a lot more with him and getting more one-on-one -on -one attention. Hey, sorry. <laughs> Can't walk on the computer. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah. So I've been working a lot with him and I feel that's really improved my striking game a lot. And yeah, I'm so excited for this fight. Yeah, speaking of your boyfriend, Cleveland Bentley, you know, how important is it for you to have someone like that, that understands the ins and outs of the fight game and is there along with you for the journey, you know, to support you instead of having someone that's kind of like, 
resisting that, you know, because a lot of times yeah. partners will resist your life, right? Your fight life. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I could date someone that wasn't training. So he just totally understands and he understands like fight week and <laughs> the emotions that come along with everything. And he's really good to deal deal with me, but he's also like a great training partner. He's close to my size. So it's just like, it's perfect when we go to a fight because I have someone that can train with me that can move with me and he moves so well. And he's just, he's such an awesome training partner that, you know, like, I don't think anyone's ever gotten injured training with him. Cause he's like, just so good at what he does. So he's perfect to have with me on fight week, training with me and moving around with me while my coach is there as well. Outside of, you know, your boyfriend, who, what other training partners have you worked with closely? Um, this camp, I've been working with a lot of different people at the gym, just who's ever around my size. So I've been seeing a lot of different looks. Um, I really actually like to work with the amateur team at our gym because the guys are closer to my size and they're just like, I don't know. The amateur team's like more clicky, I guess. Like they're all like really close knit and they're just like a really fun group to be around. So I really like working with them. So I've been working with them and the pro team and just, just working with whoever I can getting as many different looks and styles and just trying to figure it all out. Well, it must, it must, it must be like vice versa for them too, you know, to have you a professional to come in and, and give them looks too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. Although I never really look at myself like that. I'm always like, I need to get better. I need to learn. I need to figure this out. I'm just like, I'm still learning just like they are. Oh, that's a great attitude to have. Now, in this camp, have you had any new additions? Have you thrown in any, anything different into your camp? Um, I'd say like the biggest difference is I'm really utilizing Cleve. So I'm, I'm getting his opinion with everything. And I'm really like working one on one with him a lot more than doing like a lot of the classes. So I'm doing more one on one stuff and stuff with my coach there. Um, and just, I feel like I, at my old gym, everything was done a certain way. And here I kind of let them decide everything for me. And now I kind of, I feel like I know what I want and what I need. So I'm just kind of doing what I want and what I need and how I feel and going off of how, how my body feels rather than like, okay, we got to be at the gym at this time and do this and this time and this. I'm just like, hey, I'm feeling like a little sluggish. Let's wait an extra half an hour and then let's go to the gym. Or I'm feeling good earlier. Let's go to the gym now and do it. So I feel like I'm recovering a lot better and that I'm getting better sleep. And I just, I'm in a way better mood through it all too. That's that's great. Now, you know, before your last fight at UFC Ottawa, you know, you were going through a lot. You know, I know there's a lot of things that happened um, and the fight didn't really go, you know, it didn't go the way that you planned on it going. Did you have to take some time off after that fight, you know, to kind of decompress and reset yourself? Um, in, in a way I did. I did get a couple of small minor injuries in that fight. So I, I, and before that fight, like right before that fight. So I, I wanted to recover my injuries before going back super hard, but I also, um, went back home to see my family and everything with my grandpa passing away. So we got some family time in like, I think like, I don't even think I was home for 24 hours. So I like flew back here, landed and flew back. So while I was in Ottawa, I was like trying to plan <laughs> all of that and trying to book flights and figure it all out. So it was a little more stuff than I'd like to be dealing with on fight week, but that's kind of how the game goes. Your next fight, you're heading to Abu Dhabi for UFC 242. Is that a place that was on your bucket list of places that you would want to fight? Of course. Like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be, you know, like I've, I've fought in the U S and Canada and I fought in the UK when I lived out there, but you know, I, I've, I've wanted to fight out of country for a while now. And I, I don't think I could pick a better place than Abu Dhabi. So I'm so excited for this fight. It's going to be on a great card in a great city. Yeah, I'm so pumped for it. Well, you're facing a newcomer to the division, a newcomer to the organization. You know, what do you know about your opponent, uh, Liana? Um, I've watched a little bit about her, but 
I mostly leave that to my coaches to do. I don't know why. Um, I'll probably watch more of her as, as time goes on. But, you know, you got to be good to be in the UFC. But I have a lot of experience, so I'm going to show her what it's all about. She hasn't competed in 19 months, which is a long, long time, right? And, you know, you had your, you know, long stint of being away from fighting, too, a couple yeah. of years back. You know, what were some of the obstacles that you saw and then you faced and you had to overcome? Um, oh, man, like, I could write a book on it, probably. <laughs> um, like, I went through a lot of struggles, especially, like, at my last gym at the beginning, even when I first moved there, I had about a two year layoff just because I had fights lined up for the entire two years. And two weeks before every fight they fell through, I wasn't injured the entire time, but I, I didn't fight. I was in fight camp for two years straight with like 12 fights falling through. Um, <laughs> so I went through that. And then I think with me being on tough, fighting three times in like five and a half weeks or something like that. Um, it took a huge toll on my body and I got injured pretty much immediately after getting out of tough, getting ready for being on the finale. So then I had time off then. And then I had, I had so many injuries and time off, but like at the same time I was still in the gym and when I wasn't able to train, I was watching and I was learning and I was still, there every day so yeah she might have 19 months off but it doesn't mean that she wasn't training the entire time getting ready getting better so we might see a new her but you're also going to see a new me i saw that this fight is your last fight on your current contract with the ufc is that true yes it is true is, is that something in, in in your mind during this camp or is it just something that you don't even think about um, it's definitely something I think about because, yeah, I mean, everything can change after this fight. So both ways, right? So I'm, I'm very confident in this fight. I feel, I just feel like it's my time and I put in so much work and I feel ready and I feel, I feel confident, which I haven't felt enough. It's taken me a while to get here. So I feel like there's going to be a different me, but at the end of the day, I know, I know life always works out and shit happens for a reason. So whatever happens will happen. But I'm, I, <laughs> I don't see it going badly for me in Abu Dhabi. All right. Uh, one last thing before I let you go. Do you consider yourself a fighter or a martial artist? Um, you know, that's, that's a great question. I, I think I am both. <laughs> I think I started out more as a fighter and as I've been in it a while, I've turned more into a martial artist, but I think you got to have both to be good in this sport. So you got to have that fight, but you also have to have that technique and it's trying to find that balance. That's the hard part, especially once you got that technique down. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I like and what, like that's kind of what I've been thinking about a lot. This camp is how like to get that kind of fighter back. Um, because I've been so since getting signed to the UFC, it's all like, you got to do it this way. And if you're a millimeter off here, blah, 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 you could, this could happen. This could happen. And now I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this, but I'm, you know, like I'm going to be grindy. Like I'm going to go back to my roots fighting and I'm sure the technique will come with it. And if it doesn't, I'm sure it'll be a good show. Cause I don't think most fans really care a whole lot about the technique. They just want to see some brutality. And I like brutality. <laughs> All right. September 7th, UFC 242 Abu Dhabi. Thank you, Sarah, so much for the time. You know, I enjoyed this chat. And good luck on the fight and your future. Thank you very much.